Many bowls of this sort, an approximate design, survive from the 1st through the 4th centuries. It's a form that includes an outer fold at the rim and a typical Roman foot at the base. It's a shape that was popular in Ming Dynasty porcelain in the 16th century. It was a popular shape in American silver in the 18th century. The bowl begins with a substantial gather of glass on a blowpipe that's of medium size. This is a double gather process that I call a coating gather, followed immediately by a collecting gather. It's a quick way to get a lot of glass on the blowpipe. The wood block, here cherry wood soaked in water, is used for the initial shaping process. The goal is to make an egg shape from the glass gathered. An initial bubble is blown into the mass of glass. It's blown gently at first and then harder. The blowpipe is held downward so that as the bubble grows, gravity will pull the glass thinner where it's closest to the blowpipe. It's essential that the thickest part of this bubble be the center at the tip. In this case, the making the neck consists of making a constriction and then pulling outward to form a tube between the blowpipe and the spherical mass of glass. The bubble's blown larger. The tube pulled slightly longer and a constriction made near the blowpipe. Next, in preparation for the Roman foot, the vessel is reheated, holding it down so that the bubble begins to take on the shape of a cone. It's spun for a little centripetal acceleration to make the cone longer. The blow hose is added so that I can blow and shape the glass with the jacks. I'm blowing gently making the sides conical, now flattening the bottom. The lower portion is reheated. A constriction is made about an inch from the bottom. The bottom is flattened again. A blade is put on either side and squeezed, and this begins the Roman foot. Then the constriction is held. I suck in and make the Roman foot complete. This is cooling the bottom. Next, the shape of the vessel body needs to be altered. It needs to be that of an oblate spheroid to be in good preparation for making the bowl. Next is the transfer to the punty. A little bit of molten glass on the tip of the metal rod is flattened. It's blown so that the tip is a little bit cooler than otherwise. It's attached and the neck is broken. Bowls like this have a large outer fold at the rim and the tube at the top will help that formation take place. First, the glass is reheated and the tube is made perfectly cylindrical.
and after reheating, the rim is folded outward and the edge is pushed downward onto the shoulder of the bowl. This is the outer fold. And with much tooling and reheating, the glass is very thin and it cools quickly, the bowl is given its final shape. In real time, this can take up to four or five minutes to carry out. We've eliminated the reheats for brevity. The shape of the rim is given its final adjustment. It's given a final flash in the furnace and taken to the annealing oven. A tap on the rod breaks the connection, leaving the little scar called the punty mark and the piece is cooled over a period of a few hours.